Uh, this evening we had the great healing service, which comes about in the midst of Holy Week. And I was rather surprised to hear one or two priests who didn't serve the service because they didn't think that it had anything to do with or fit into the last week of Christ's life and Holy Week. And that's rather startling to me because when we realize that the word saltir means one who heals or to heal, and that our salvation consists in the healing of the fallen human nature and the healing of, of each one of us spiritually, of course, this healing service is extremely important and it really sets out for us a clear understanding of what Holy Week is actually all about and what is accomplished by Christ during this, during this whole ministry, but during this week in particular. That we should understand that Christ is healing the sin of the world and the sin of the world is death because it's death that alienates us from God. It's death that is the result of our misuse of our energies. It, death is the wages of sin. And sin, of course, is alienation from God. So death is the result of our alienation from God. And, uh, but death also is equated with sin by the Apostle. So the two are both side by side. And Christ is healing the fallen human nature by liberating us, first of all, from the fear of the bondage of death, as Paul tells us in his letter to the Hebrews. And also, bringing the human nature back to wholeness, back to completeness. In himself, he reunites the human nature with the divine and makes immortality possible for mankind by grace. And the whole ministry of Christ on earth is a healing ministry. And consequently, this Holy Week is particularly and intensely about our healing, the healing of mankind. And in the anointing service, we again confess that man is body and soul together. That the soul alone is not the person, the body is not the person, but the person consists of soul and body united together as uh, St. Um, Methodius of Olympus says, in one form of the beautiful. And so the whole of Holy Week is really about our healing. And Christ is going to accomplish this healing. By death, he conquers the power of death. By raising again uh, from the dead, he bestows the possibility of resurrection upon mankind and makes it possible again for us to find paradise through him and immortality through grace. So the healing service is very significant for us and it's profoundly meaningful. And this is why the church has placed it in the midst of Holy Week, so that we might truly understand what is taking place during this week, this whole healing of mankind. And this is very important and significant for us. I also want to reflect a little bit on one of the gospel readings in the, in the healing service this evening. And that is the, uh, the first gospel reading about the Good Samaritan. And we read that, and I'm sure we make all kinds of moral uh, sense out of it, and, and make several sermons of it, of course. But I wonder how often it actually penetrates the heart and the mind so that we have some understanding, so that we realize, first of all, there are two sides to the story, the side that reveals something about genuine morality to us and the side that speaks to us about ourselves and our condition. The first one is that when the man is taken, overtaken by thieves, and we're not told that he's not an Israelite, so we surmise that he is an Israelite, and uh, there's reason to surmise that, then the Levite and the priest, the holiest, the best, the most moral, the most righteous, the most pious, ones come down the road, and they look upon him, and all they see is a bloody pulp lying in the ditch, naked and beaten, bleeding to death. And they, if they even thought anything vaguely related to pity or compassion, they didn't show it. They crossed by on the other side, pretending they didn't see him. 
And this is something that Christians fall into so easily, that we have these uh, smarming, sophistic little sayings like, there but for the grace of God go I. So we look in the ditch and we see a wounded and bleeding man and we say, oh, there but for the grace of God am I. But I'm not bleeding to death, so I'll hurry on my way. And, uh, or we say, oh, hate the sin but love the sinner. So we look at the man bleeding in the ditch and say, oh, I hate his wounds and his blood, but I love him. But I'm in a hurry, I'll hurry on by. And this kind of self-righteous and arrogance and condescension characterizes much of Christianity in our day. And nothing pushes people away from Christ and pushes people toward atheism so much as the pompous, arrogant self-righteousness and condemnation, condemnatory attitude of Christians. And the idea that we as Christians can ignore those who are suffering and look at people and say, oh, well, they're a sinner. Uh, are not, of course, I'm not a sinner, but ooh, these sinners. And uh, we so often can convince ourselves that we're somehow, uh, as some of the Protestants say, well, I'm born again, you know, I don't sin anymore, but these people, they're not born again. And this is a catastrophe for us. It's a catastrophe because such an attitude clearly separates us from Christ, clearly deprives us of any hope of the heavenly kingdom. To be righteous and to know that we're righteous is a serious fault. Because if we're truly righteous, Christ said he didn't come for us. Far better to be a sinner because Christ came for us. And this is uh, the first part of the story. And the part of it that tells us we're the Levites, we're the Christians, and we're the ones who are walking past the wounded and the beaten. Uh, the other part of the story is that, in fact, we're the ones who are wounded and lying in the ditch. And Christ is the good Samaritan who comes along to rescue us. Remember, the Samaritan is the outcast, the one who's not part of the, the one who's misunderstood, the one who's despised. And Christ was also considered an outcast and often despised. But he picks us up and carries us into the inn and leaves us there until he comes again. Well, of course, the inn is the church. And Christ has picked us up out of the ditch, wounded by the demons, stripped of our spiritual vesture by the demons, and now he takes us into the spiritual hospital of the church to be cared for until he comes again.